From the heart of the 713, it's fun, it's engaging, and it's uniquely Houston. H-Town's hottest new show, Chatting with Chelsea. Here's your host, Chelsea Edwards. Thank you for joining me for another chat with Chelsea Bestie. It is time to let our hair down. We have a special treat for you today. Hit rapper Ken the Man is here, okay? So for those of you who don't know, Ken the Man is not actually a man. She's all woman, baby. <laughs> Even if you're not into hip hop, you're going to want to hear what she has to say about being a boss in a male dominated field, okay? So keep it here for that. Let me tell you, before before I was a talk show host, before I was a news reporter for Fox, long time ago, I used to be a video editor for another news station. And man, I busted my butt at that job. It was some strange hours working overnight. And I had to work especially hard when I was on a shift with this one guy who didn't really know how to do his job. We've all been there, right? You gotta pick up the slack. You were working extra hard. You see his product and it's just, like how did you how did you end up here so <laughs> one day he accidentally left his paycheck stub on the printer and that's how I found out he was getting paid significantly more than me ouch I mean I was mad I was upset but you know what I did I took that and I immediately went out and got another job <laughs> and I actually used that job offer to up my pay at my current job so you know it all worked out but I gotta say women are historically underpaid we know it uh, just one thing to think about is uh, maybe you know use those extra opportunities to leverage yourself to into some better pay because <laughs> baby if they can't pay you don't really need to stay okay all right <laughs> it's something to keep by. We'll have a lot of tips for you today, but it's all about being a boss in a male dominated field and it can be especially hard in a field like construction, especially when it comes to job interviews. Check out this TikToker. There's no women who work here. It's just men. I'm totally capable of doing the job. Here's my resume with my proven track record. You know, I'm just worried that one of the guys might say a joke and you might think they're being serious. And honestly, the things that the men say would land me a lawsuit. And it's just easier to not hire women than it is to train them how to respect women. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, got it. You know, I just didn't know you were a woman because your name is a boy's name. So that's the only reason why I called you. If I would have seen your name and would have known you were a woman, I wouldn't have even called you in for this interview. So I'm sorry for wasting your time. Okay, guess I'll just go start my own business then. You heard right there from the tile artisan on TikTok. She says she would even see companies hire 18-year-old guys over her who had 10 years of experience. So her solution was to start her own company where she could hire lots and lots of women. You go girl. All right. <laughs> the other good thing about that is you don't have to worry about what you're ordering for lunch. I quite literally might be the only one to ever even think about this at all. When I first started in my sales job, which is in a male dominated industry, I always thought when we went to lunch meetings, I needed to get a greasy burger like all the other guys just to fit in. And for lunch today, I had my girly little salad right in front of everyone and I don't care. So if you are a young lady, eat that girly little salad, order that fruity little drink, because you can't shoot whiskey. I don't know, but just do your thing, girl. Yes, Brenna, eat your salad, girl. And then when Greg is giving you a hard time, just say, I don't know how women keep outliving men in this country by at least 60 years. And then take a bite, just like that. That'll shut them up real easy. <laughs> So eat what you eat and then do what you do and love it, just like Ainsley here. Football practice today, getting ready for our first game. And something happened that made me laugh. So I was explaining to the kids where to line up, and I was using my fingernails on the football. This is just a tiny one. I'll use it as an example. Of course, I have a random football in my car. So I was like this. I was like, Timmy is going to line up as the gold fingernail, and Billy and Jimmy are going to be the red fingernails. 
And they kind of giggled because it's boys on a football field. They probably didn't think that they were going to be <laughs> seeing some gel nails as their example for how to play. I could do a full face of makeup and come to the football field, and that wouldn't make me any less of a football coach. I just feel like some people can't, simply can't wrap their mind around the fact that you can like two things. That's okay. I'm not any less of a woman because I enjoy a sport with a ball where people hit each other. Speaking of not giving a darn about what people think about you, again, we have Ken, the man, today. She's going to tell us all about being a single mom and also being a powerhouse in the hip-hop industry, how she's kicking butt, taking names on the other side of this break. millions of streams and YouTube views, but she says she's feeling splitting no bills. <laughs> Welcome, Kendra <Kinderman>. Man. <laughs> so happy to have you here. Happy to be here. So when people Google you, they may expect to see a man, but they see this beauty. <laughs> Explain your name to folks. It's just my alter ego. It's like, you know how women like Beyonce has Sasha Fears. Mm -hmm. It's more like I'm the man. Okay. I have that I, have, I just feel like I have a little bit more of a dominant approach to my music. Yes, I definitely feel that dominance in your songs. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You're also a single mom like myself. Mm -hmm. How in the world do you manage? Um, I have a support system. I feel okay. like that's where it starts. It's like, without that, I don't think that, I don't know what, he would be probably on every set that I've ever been on, and I'm just so blessed and grateful to have that. Like, my dad is, um, and my brother, they mm -hmm. kind of like homebodies a little bit, so I got lucky. Nice. Yes. I like that. Does he realize who you are, how popular you are? He thinks that I'm so corny. <laughs> Until, Don't they all? <laughs> yes, until we out, and then they be like, ranting and raving. He be like, I just cannot believe my mama famous. <laughs> <laughs> so he realizes. But it's like, oh, you're such a groupie. you just a groupie. Because <laughs> why you oh got to see God. it to believe it? Like, yes, so. yes. And I mean, you really shot up. Uh, you used to be a door dasher, mm -hmm. Uber driver, all mm -hmm. that. Were there things that you took away from those experiences that you use now? Nope. Nope. All I do is order the food. <laughs> That's all I took away is how to press the button to order the food because I do not cook. <laughs> That's what I learned from that job. Yep, that, they come quick. <laughs> yes. Now, we are seeing more and more female rappers become mm -hmm. more popular like yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel like the industry is opening up more Absolutely. for females? Mm -hmm. okay. That's why I was like... I feel like now it's female dominated. Okay. Just saying. Uh huh. I didn't make the rules, but that's what we're seeing, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it about women that you think is attracting the the crowds and the audiences? I just feel like we always cared a little more hmm. about everything. Like hmm. we care more about our appearance. We care more about our content, our context. We just, I just feel like we always like. We just do everything better, in my opinion. If you, I feel like behind every powerful man, it's always a woman that's just mm. doing everything, all the hard work. And then they just out there with the face of it being all, oh, I'm a man. I'm a man. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a man. <laughs> you don't listen to me. I'm a man. We're going to have a little men mocking segment every show now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> did you find it hard to be taken seriously at first when you first started rapping? I didn't. Oh, nice. I didn't have that thing because, I, like I said, I just, my mom's presence is a, just a, like, I deliver a certain, like, expectation, oh. I feel. Like, I kind of, like, I come in and I'm like, That's, this is what it's going to be. It's, no, I can't be swayed. I, can't, I come in with this presence of just, like, I know what I want and I'm going to get it or we just ain't going to. It's not going to work for us. I like that. I yeah. like that. That is a good tip for any, anybody can use that, mm -hmm. whatever industry they're in. Mm -hmm. Like, you go in, set those expectations. Yep. Like, this is how it's going to go this down. This is how it's going to go. If I'm it don't go, go I'm going to go. I, oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and I, oh, oh. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, so now that you are, like, I mean, in the spotlight, mm -hmm. you, you, get a lot, you got a lot of followers, mm -hmm. a lot of people watching you. How do you deal with the naysayers, the haters who just in general probably have issues with seeing women in the rap industry? Well, I'm kind of a, like, I don't look at, I don't follow, like, a bunch of blogs and, like, a mm -hmm. bunch of negative 
sights and like I just surround myself with peace and positivity. It's so crazy because my friends be in the comments uh -huh. and they be like, I just cussed such a uh, using one, two, three, four, five I, because they said the show shoes was ugly or something. <laughs> and so I just was like, I don't, I don't know why y'all look at it. I don't look at it. It's like I don't look into negativity because it hurts, mm -hmm. you know. So I just decided that I was gonna be the person that just don't see a thing. I'm, yes. I'm blind. So it's kind of like I mean, do y'all know y'all talking to y'all? Mm -hmm. I ain't so, seen a thing in years. Not even worried about it. Yeah, so I just kind of block it out. I think that's just how you kind of like ignore it because they're going to say it. Mm -hmm. Everybody is so opinionated these days. Oh, I, mean, I don't know when it got like this. Right. Everybody just got such an opinion and it's not just the opinion, it's the negative one. So mm -hmm. it's just like, I don't know, you just got to kind of just be like... Yes. Well, I love how our friends will come to our defense. Like, yes. <laughs> you don't have to ask. They will just show up yes. get that done. So how have you maintained your relationships with your friends, even in stardom? Girl, they come with me everywhere. It's so crazy because my best friend, she's been in, like, my very first videos all the way. We shooting a video this weekend. So, oh, nice. Yeah, it's like, I just, I don't know. They just, I, they come with me. They do everything. Like, I be trying to find stuff for them to do. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of my friends are, they do stuff for me. Like, they, nice. I have one of my closest friends is a manager. Then I had another manager. We didn't start off as friends. We started off as being the management and artists. But then we're really, really close. So, and then, like, my nail tech is my friend. My hairstylist is my friend. My, nice. like, it's just kind of like, oh, and I just like I just incorporate them in everything like mm. I just like who who wouldn't want that for people that really genuinely love them so like sometimes my friends would come on set and be fixing my hair for me like you know so yeah is that a trust thing is that a you know good vibes thing having all these people making sure these people are around you yeah I, lo I love them like they're my day to day so it's kind of mm. like it's better when they bring them to work with me yeah so, you know so. bring your friend to work every day <laughs> every day like whatever yes. we be they was all on tour with me girl they was coming <laughs> I was flying them out. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right, so speaking of tours, like, I mean, you really sold out some cities yes. on yours. Mm -hmm. What is something that people don't know about you that they don't see on stage or on, on the blogs or anything else? I'm a serious sleeper. Okay. <laughs> I can take a nap right now. Girl, me too. <laughs> I know. They be like asking me and stuff like, how do you just keep your mental health and all that? I'm like, girl, I don't let nothing bother me. If I'm stressed out, I'm going to take a nap. Just go to sleep, guys. I you like ever stress? Yes. Go to sleep. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't know. That, I think a lot of people don't know that I'm actually born. Like, um, my friend told me she was out of town with her friends. Mm -hmm. And then um, they was telling her, like, I can't stop Liz. She said, girl, she probably in the bed right now. Let me call her. <laughs> Not me, like I'm so boring. That is me. I mean, you know, back in the day, I might have been. I was a little lit. Yeah, yeah, we were lit back then, but now. In bed by ten. Yes. Oh, girl. I was just telling my other manager, Melissa. I was telling her. I said, I can't even go. I used to be in the studio till six in the morning. Oof. I go to the studio at like twelve p.m. Now I'll be out by four. Okay. She's like, we are done. I'm going to sleep today. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming in and letting <laughs> us know how it is to be a female in this industry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were making such huge moves. So oh, thank, thank you for coming in and giving us a little advice to take with us. Yeah, thank y'all for having me. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Coming up, we are talking more about being a powerhouse in a male-dominated industry. You're going to want to hear this story coming up. a mark in a male-dominated field. We've got the CEO of South Post Oak Recycling Center, also 2023 Texas Small Business of the Year. You've been doing big things, but what people might find interesting is that this is not where you started in recycling. No. Not at all. <laughs> you, were, you were in, like, corporate, in the corporate world. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Okay, tell us about that. You know, I, I spent probably the first 15 years of my career mm -hmm. um, on the corporate side. I was in and strategy and talent management and development um, working for my dream company last mm -hmm. which was the Walt Disney Company and I think we all have people at some point in our lives that say hey what's next for you yes and part of my what's next was looking 
are considered my family business. So this was a family business, mm -hmm. but you were, I mean, you grew up around this? I did. Okay. I did. S subtly. I mean, in, in some way, you know, my dad and mom didn't start this business until I was in high school. Okay. And so what I saw was my mom, who was kind of a forensic insurance adjuster, wow. um, not recycling. Okay. And I saw my dad, who actually was in the recycling industry business, and he used to work for a large publicly traded recycling company. Mm -hmm. So I saw them as working professionals. Okay. You know? Was this something that you never pictured as a male-dominated field because you, you know, you saw your dad or your mom doing this? Right. Or did you step into it and say, hey, it's a lot of guys in this room? You know, it's a good question. Actually, I, I didn't even consider this as a career. Hmm. You know, I, yeah. it was nothing that I looked at. I just, it wasn't sexy, if I'm quite honest. <laughs> right. It was not sexy. I don't know. You look good in a hard I, hat, you, you know, it works. I make it work. <laughs> I always said I was going to be scrappy chic at some point. <laughs> nice. But I make it work you know right now and mm -hmm. I said okay well if I'm gonna work this hard for the mouse because mm -hmm. I was working for the Walt Disney company at that time I got to a point where I said I'm gonna go work this hard for myself oh that's and a good reason so, to step out and okay. so that's when I said hey let's 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 go do this and the family was ready for it mm -hmm. you know there's not a lot of people that can go from generation one to generation two without somebody unfortunately passing away mm -hmm. or the business failing and long story short somebody said to me you should take this opportunity yeah you know you should take it what have been some of the challenges being I mean not only a woman but yeah. a black woman in this industry you know I think there's a couple of things I I think oftentimes in a male dominated industry the people in the industry don't look at it as such mm. right and yeah. so then they're not even aware of the biases or the unconsciousness that happens mm -hmm. and so I think early on I can remember going to conferences or expos with my dad and he would tell people hey this is this is Brandy Brandy's gonna be taking over the business you know I want you to talk to her about your sales your buy deals and they would immediately look at him to kind of have the conversation ah. and I don't even think my dad was aware of it Chelsea but mm -hmm. he would say no you don't need to talk to me you need to talk to her Good. and so yeah. that was that was critical mm -hmm. you know that was a critical shift I think not not because I was self-conscious but he made it so clear that hey she has the authority if yes. you will she is empowered to lead and I really think that that was one thing that set me up mm -hmm. um, and it could have been a challenge a lot longer yeah. than it was because it was a challenge but essentially that was having an advocate or a champion you know in my corner to say hey no she has a place here right and I want her to step up for it well you have become yeah. an advocate mm -hmm. for other women like, you so. don't think that it's important just to have women working for you but right. also in leadership roles uh, tell us a little bit about how you make that happen absolutely uh, on a couple areas I think just just in the recycling industry you know very actively evolved I think for women to be successful in anything that they do they need to know it full circle right and mm -hmm. part of that is constantly learning building your networks and so forth well what I found was that even in my trade association there were women in the industry but you didn't really see them hmm. and so what I started hearing from people is are there women around and so myself along with another industry colleague relaunched a group called women in recycling okay. and fast forward Chelsea five years later I would tell you there are so many more women in leadership positions there are so many more networks and mentoring available and so that's one area is just to raise the visibility and create a space mm -hmm. uh, the second thing I think if you look at our company alone you will see a good number of women in in across the board in different roles yes. and I so I think it starts with self saying hey I, I can be in a male-dominated uh, workforce mm -hmm. or industry but we can hire who we want to hire right so what do you say to women who want to step into these industries mm -hmm. and there might not be a group of women to yeah. welcome them there you know I think a couple of things and I think it's a lot of things start with self mm -hmm. so I say know thyself you know know and have I hate to say the thing thick skin but yeah. part of it is you got to step into space with a sense of resilience mm -hmm. like and and 
confidence, um, but not arrogance. Confidence is I belong here. I'm absolutely supposed to be um, belong here. I'm equipped. I know the industry, whatever it is. I think that that's the first step. Then I think that there's the reality that we all need advocates and champions and sponsors. Hmm. And I think that that is in to be able to connect with people and build relationships. I think that that comes when people see you show up with a level of excellence. You'd be surprised how many people want to support you. And that's how I feel like I've been able to get to where I am. Yes. Okay. We love the support. Yes. You got me boosted, yes. ready to take on yes. anything. It's All right. I love it. <laughs> yes. All right. You guys have got to keep it here because we got our final takeaways. Make sure you boosted. You can do anything. We'll be back. For chat with Chelsea today, we've been talking about being a woman working in a field full of fellas. So some things for you to take away today. Remember who you are. Now, you can still be a scrappy and still be chic as well. We make it work. Be sure to network and connect. Find a mentor in whatever your field, uh, whatever field you're in. And don't forget to take your naps. That's from Ken. <laughs> Ken said, take your naps. <laughs> take your naps, ladies. <laughs> the skin good. Yes. I love it. I love Any it. other takeaways from you, ladies? Um, I would just say, like, always do you. Be confident. I feel like be courageous. Take mm -hmm. chances. And don't let the no's stop you. I feel like that's, that's the thing that we always get no's. And we always, you know, just feel like we failed. But it's just like if you keep pushing forward, you're always going to take a million more steps so just keep going ladies yes brandy i love that you know i would say just assess yourself and ask yourself what am i good at mm -hmm. you know what do i do well yes. what is my why and then i would encourage people to be comfortable being uncomfortable yes lean mm -hmm. into look at spaces look at opportunities that maybe are not already saturated yes and sometimes those are male dominated spaces mm -hmm. do it works. do it do it works right. and find a place that supports you yes find a place that supports you um being uniquely you okay well That's speaking of beautiful. support if people are interested in following you finding out more about your company absolutely south post oak recycling center we're on linkedin mm -hmm. you can find us there um for me personally Personally, it's Brandy Harlow, uh, ending in E-A-U-X, believe yes. it or not. And I'm on LinkedIn as well. Very responsive. All right. Ken the Man, where can people find out about the next drop? Wish I had a LinkedIn, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> But I have Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. Yes. Yes, you can follow me at I'm Ken the Man on everything. I M K E N T H E M A N. All right. And you can follow us at Chelsea Show Fox. We'll see you on the next Chatting with Chelsea. I like it. I know that's